to part 3 of making Cadric the humanoid robot and in this video we're going to cover the connections and the code. If you haven't checked out Cadric my humanoid robot yet, I have provided a link to it in the description below. Also, if you want to know how to make a line following robot, I've provided a link to it in the description below. These are the wires coming from the right leg, the left leg, the right arm, the left arm, the IR receiver and the power supply. I fixed the Arduino Mega to the chest box using double sided sticking tape and to save space I took the breadboard apart like this and I fixed these two strips here using double sided sticking tape again. This space was originally intended uh, to fix the battery, but I chose to use the power supply. So if you want, you could also power your robot using a battery. Now coming to this side. This is a switch so I can on and off the robot as I please. And this hole is for inserting a USB cable if I have to upload the code. You can make the connections as per this diagram that I'm going to show now. So this is the power wire coming from the external power supply that I'm going to attach here. So the power wire is coming from the servo can be attached to this line. And this is the ground wire which I'm going to attach here. So all the ground wires can be attached to this line. And these are two connection wires that I have used to connect this section to this section and this section to this section of the board. Don't forget to give the common ground connection. And now I'm going to connect the servos. As you can see here, I've segregated the wires as ground wires, power wires and signal wires to make the connections easier. I've done the power connections and now let's do the signal connections. Now I'm going to give the IR receiver connections. done with the connections and let's fix the front plate. For Catrick, I have used two libraries. One is irremote.h for the IR remote but if you want you could also make it Bluetooth control that is control it via your phone or you could even make it voice control. And the second library that I've used is servo.h for the servos. Now what you have to do is you have to determine which button you want to use for each move. After you've chosen the buttons for the moves, go to file, examples, IR remote and IR receiver demo. Here you have to give the digital pin that you have decided to connect the IR receiver signal pin to. So for example, I am going to use the digital pin 2. And then there will be a hex here, you have to delete that. You just want IR receiver, uh, you just want results.value in the serial.print and after that you have got to upload the code. In the serial monitor and now you have to connect the IR receiver. 
For the IR receiver, the right pin is power, the middle one is ground and the left pin is signal. One thing that I've done is that I've removed the transmitter from this place and I've fixed it over here so that I can control CADRAC using both my hands. To determine the unique code of a button, direct the transmitter at the receiver and press that button. For example, let's say that I have decided on the button, on this button, for the move jawbreaker, I've pressed it and now let's see what has appeared on the serial monitor. So this is the unique code for that button. What I have to do is I have to copy this piece of code. Go to the original program. And now I have to use it paste it right here. After I've included both the libraries, you have to declare the servos. Here I've declared the 16 servos that I've used and I've also declared the IR receiver pin. I've connected my IR receiver to pin 6 and now let's go to white sensor. I'm enabling the IR receiver pin over here, serial.begin for the serial monitor and then I'm attaching the servos to the various um, PWM and analog pins. Now this here is the rest position of the robot. So what happens here is that I'm gonna um, decode the value that I have just uh, of the button that I've pressed and if the value of the button that I've pressed equals this value that we have recorded before then I'm gonna call the write punch function I'm gonna, I'm gonna print it and then I'm gonna call the write punch function after which I've included a small delay so now let's see what actually happens in the write punch function so for like for that like that I've um, written similar pieces of code for each of the moves for example here we have block, squat, sway, bow etc and at the end you need to resume the IR receiver so that it gets ready for receiving the next value I've included a delay of a second and here I've closed the void loop So what these functions basically consist of are for loops. For example, in this write punch function, servos 1, servo, servos 1, 3 and 2 go from their rest positions, which are 6500 and 10 respectively, to a position that I have determined using the trial and error method. After it goes to that position, then there is a, de there is a delay of half a second, after which, in this piece of code, it comes back to the rest position. Now for some of the moves like jawbreaker and ape call, the robot has a slight tendency to move forward or backward due to the free play of the servos. So what you have to do is you have to counterbalance this effect using the hip and ankle servos. So for example, if the robot has a tendency to go backward, to fall backward, as it does in the move ape call, you have to counterbalance its effects using the hip and ankle servos. You have to bring it forward so it doesn't fall. And you have to do the reverse if the robot has a tendency to fall forward. I've provided a link to the code in the description below. So now, we're finished with the build of Catrick. During your build, you might encounter a lot of problems like I did. For example, when I made Catrick, some of the wires would come out or maybe there'd be a short circuit and there'd be smoke coming out of Catrick or maybe even the program would refuse to upload. So, the main thing is, don't lose hope. Because if I can do it, so can you. So, until next time, goodbye.